the last time I managed to get to a decision. So with that said, let's continue. All right, this is where I last left off and now I have to make a decision. The question is though, who to go with? Um, hmm, let's see here. Oh yeah, I'm trying to decide who to help. Um, should I go with Natsuki and help her bake cupcakes? Go with Monica? Or go with Yuri and help with the decorations? Or check on Sayori? Um... Hmm. Decisions, decisions, decisions. I think I'm just gonna stick with the... I'm just gonna stick with my... Good friend Yuri. Well, I'll probably be most useful helping out Yuri. Me? Serious? Why would you? Natsuki. I can already tell you're about to say something mean. Plus, I can peer into your thoughts. N no! I was just saying! Ugh! So, you'll be helping Yuri then, Ken? Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I guess I can kiss anything on my butt. Drinking Gatorade and eating carrot sticks for the weekend goodbye. I'm glad. I have a bad habit of overthinking these sort of things. So I think your assistance would be very useful. That's great to hear. Natsuki, will you be able to handle the baking yourself? I mean, yeah! I mean, if I were to invite him over, the house would probably be burnt down, and I have to explain to the insurance company that a complete doofus burnt the cupcakes! I said I would be fine! Okay, okay. Everyone can tell that Natsuki is feeling a little sour. Wait, isn't she already sour? Anyways, so is that everything we needed to go over? Yeah, that should be about it. Are you guys excited? Well, excited may not be the right word. But I suppose I'm looking forward to it a little bit. Do you feel the same way, Ken? Me? Uh, I guess you could say I'm interested to see how it'll turn out. That's good enough for me. What about you, Natsuki? Of course, she says absolutely nothing. Natsuki? What? Why is everyone yelling at me? I didn't even do anything! Except sit here and pout! No, that's not what I meant at all. Uh... Yuri anxiously glances between everyone in the room. I I'm sorry for this. I don't really know why Ken picked me. And also... Um, excuse me, but I seem to recall you inviting me a few times over to read with you. Your cupcakes are the best cupcakes I've ever had. They go really well with my tea. And nothing that I do for the event will compare to that, so... So... I get it, I get it! I'm kinda surprised, though! Well, why? Um... Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Well, I'm the one acting immature! It took it that long to figure it out. I already know that! But you're trying to cheer me up all of a sudden! I, I know I'm not very good at it. I'm sorry if I said something bad. Natsuki isn't the only one surprised. Monica and I are also taken aback by Yuri's words. When she already has trouble with words, trying to cheer someone up must be far out of her own comfort zone. But I begin to understand. Do I? Yuri was trying to sound like Sayori. Even if it didn't work perfect perfectly, I could tell that she tried to say something Sayori would say at a time like this. Because Sayori always helps everyone smile and feel good about themselves. Aw, that's so... Aw. No! I kind of appreciated it! I'm sorry for making a big deal out of nothing! But I'm going to say this! Hmm? You better bet that my cupcakes are going to be the best part of the whole event! Uh, I believe you. Liar! Yeah. I hope to see everyone do their best, but with that, there's nothing more for today, so I guess it's time for us to head out. Alright, let's get out of here then! 
I know, I'm going to the 7-Eleven! Everyone packs up their things. I start to follow Monica and Natsuki out the door as they chat between each other. Uh, um... Hey? I turn around. Sorry. I realize that I don't have any way of contacting you this weekend. Oh, you're right. I can't believe that slipped my mind. Really? Should I give you my phone number? I think that would be the best way, yes. Alright then. You're gonna exchange phone numbers. And Twitter accounts, Facebook accounts, and YouTube channels, and Twitch channels, and everything else in between. Okay. Then I'll be stopping by your house on Sunday. Hey? My house? Is that a problem? No, not at all. I just thought that I would be the one going to your house since I'm the one helping you. Uh, I suppose that makes sense. But if you don't mind, I think I would prefer going to your house. Alright. In that case, it won't be a problem. I decided not to press Yuri for a reason. Oh, I can think of a thousand reasons! It's not like it should matter much either way, so I'll just need to make sure my room is clean. I hope I manage to make myself useful in some way. I'm not nearly as creative as you are. Don't underestimate yourself, Ken. I think that will make... Blech. Take two. I think that will make a very productive team. Even if you only chose me because you felt bad or something. Wait. You don't actually think that, do you? I... don't know. It's difficult to come up with any other reason you may have chosen me. You're forgetting the one reason with the most common sense. I chose to help you because that's what I want to do. I mean, I could have easily picked Atsuki, Monica, or Sayori. But... Yuri thinks to herself with an extremely tense expression. Yuri, you're overthinking this. You want me to point out when you're overthinking, right? Eh? I... I didn't realize. I'm telling you, I want to. That's all there is to it. Do you believe me? I... Yuri thinks really hard again. She looks straight into my eyes for a long while. Her eyes make me feel uncomfortable. And her eyes almost put me into a trance. And at the snap of my fingers, you're going to be stiff and rigid as a bar of steel. I believe you. As if it took her tremendous effort, Yuri finally says that and relaxes her expression. And I'm really looking forward to Sunday. Yeah. I am too. After that exchange, I make my way out the door, and Yuri follows. I can't believe this! Yuri's going to be coming to my house on Sunday? My anxiety shoots through the roof. Whoa, take it easy there, pal! Even though I've gotten pretty used to handling her at this point, there's no telling what might end up happening when we're outside of school. More than that, she told me that she was looking forward to it. Is this the chance I have to make something happen between us? Hey, easy there, big guy. One step at a time, eh. Or is it too early for that? I choose the latter. Only time will tell. But until then, I won't be able to take my mind off it. I seriously can't wait. It's already Sunday. I've been getting increasingly anxious about Yuri's upcoming visit. So much so, I gotta check to make sure that everything's nice, neat, and orderly. I keep telling myself there's no reason to be nervous, but it doesn't help much. Yuri's clearly an introvert and also an intimate person in general. There's no doubt that she'll open up a little bit when it's just the two of us. Meanwhile, we've been texting occasionally. She was extremely apprehensive at first, but it wasn't long before I was already learning more about her. But putting Yuri aside, I haven't heard a thing from Sayori since she left the club early the other day. It's not like we text each other all the time or anything, <clears throat> but I've been worried about her in the back of my mind. Between what Sayori said and what Monica said, is it really okay for me to put Sayori's feelings aside when she might need me? Sorry about that. 
I decide to visit Siori before Yuri comes over. Rather than asking, I simply tell her, I'm coming over! Much like we've done in the past. And I promise not to chuck a baseball through your window! Once I reach Siori's house, I knock on the door before entering it myself. Hopefully not tripping any alarms. Or getting the police involved. Again, we used to play so often that we've made it a habit of simply entering each other's houses like we were family. The house is quiet. Siori isn't anywhere on the first floor, so I assume she's up in her room. It's already strange of her not to run down and greet me. I head up to her bedroom, where I finally find her. Siori? Hi, Ken. I sit down in her room. Siori forces a smile. But it's easy to tell that she's different. There's a minute of, there's a minute of silence between us. You haven't come over like this in a long time, have you? Uh, I guess you're right. It has been a long time. Not much has really changed, has it? Siori's room is as messy as it's always been. Shocker. I also recognize the same stuffed animals and wall decorations that she's had for years now. Hehehe. <laughs> if you came over more often, it would be such a mess. That's because I end up cleaning it for you. Lazy. Ugh. How come you suddenly wanted to come over today? Aren't you supposed to see Yuri today? How would you know? Anyways, yeah, but... Wait, how did you know that? Siri had already left by the time we decided that last meeting. Monica told me. It's only natural for her to keep me informed about the festival preparations, right? Uh, that's true. But what about you? Aren't you going to be helping Monica today? Of course! But I'm just helping her online. We didn't plan to meet up or anything. Ah, so it was just me and Yuri then. Shouldn't it be Yuri and I? Well, grammar aside. Yep. There's more silence between us. Siori stares in a random direction, and then in another direction, and then another, and then another. Everything about her behavior is really uncharacteristic. I finally get to the point. I just wanted to see how you were doing. After you left on Friday, when something's wrong, you can't hide it from me. I know you too well. So, Siori smiles, shaking her head. That's no good, Ken. Eh? Why can't it just be like it's always been? This is all my fault. If I didn't get so weak and accidentally express my feelings, if I didn't make that stupid mistake, then you wouldn't have been worried about me at all. You wouldn't have come here. You wouldn't have been thinking about me right now. But this is just my punishment, isn't it? I'm getting punished for being so selfish. I think that's why the world decided to have you come over today. Are you sure? I kind of came over on my own, uh, decision. It just wants to torture me. Hee <laughs> hee. Siori? I grab Siori by the shoulders. What on earth are you saying? Are you listening to yourself right now? I know something happened to you. There's no other explanation for you to be like this. So tell me already. Until I know, I won't be able to stop thinking about it. Ah. Ah. Siori gives me an empty smile. You really put me in a trap, Ken. Do you have the key to the cage so you can let me out? I think I'm just going to keep you locked up for a while. But you're wrong. Nothing happened to me. I've always been like this. You're just seeing it for the first time. Seeing what? What are you talking about, Sayori? Hehehe. <laughs> You're really just going to make me say it, aren't you, Ken? I guess I have no choice this time. The thing is, I've had really bad depression my whole life. Did you know that? So why didn't you talk to a therapist about it? Why aren't you taking antidepressants? Why do you think I'm late to school every day? Because most days I can't even find a reason to get out of bed. What reason is there to do anything when I fully know how worthless I am? Why go to school? Why eat? Why make friends? Why make other people put their energy and caring to waste by having them spend it on me? That's what it feels like. And that's why I just want to make everyone happy. Without anyone worrying about me. I'm in shock. I can't even figure out how to respond. 
How is it possible that Ziori kept this from me the entire time that I've known her? Did she really want so badly for me to just not think about her? Why, Ziori? E? Why is it that you've never told me about this? It almost feels like I've been betrayed as your close friend. Because if I knew, I would have done everything I could to support you. Even if there's only so much that I could do, I would have tried a little bit harder to make every day a little better for you. That's why I'm your friend. All you had to do was tell me. You don't understand at all, Ken. Why do you think I didn't tell you? Because if I told you, then you would have to waste ever caring about me instead of doing important things. Wait, what? Um... I hate to argue this statement, but... I think caring for your best friend is important. I mean, you can't just leave him hanging. I mean, if a friend has a problem, then you have to talk about it. And you have to come up with a solution. Plain and simple. Anyways, I don't want to be cared about. Jesus Christ. It's bittersweet when people try to care about me. It feels nice sometimes, but it also feels like a bat being swung against my head. Ah, that's why I wanted so badly for you to make friends with everyone else. Helping everyone be happy together is the best thing for me. But then I discovered something else too. Seeing you make friends and get closer with everyone in the club. It feels like a spear going through my heart. Oh my God. Siori, it was your idea to bring me to the club in the first place! <sighs> God. So that's why. That's why I decided the world just wants to torture me. Every path leads to nothing but hurt. Ah. You're right that I don't understand. I don't understand your feelings at all, Siori. But I don't need to understand. Whatever it takes for me to help you stop hurting. That's what I'll do. No, Ken. There's nothing. Nothing at all. The only thing that could have helped is if everything could be like it always was. But I was selfish. I finally showed you what a horrible person I am. Tears streaked down Sayori's face. I made you join the literature club because I was selfish. I knew it. And I was punished by my heart in a way that I couldn't understand. <clears throat> And now you came here and I made you hurt too. I'm just weak and selfish. That's all I am. And that's why I'm going to accept these punishments. Because I deserve every last one. Without thinking, I once again grab Siori's shoulders. This time I pull her into a tight embrace. Hopefully not constricting her. Uh, Ken? Siori, I don't care if you feel selfish. I'm really happy that you convinced me to join the club. Seeing you every day makes it worthwhile enough. If I make friends with everyone else, then that's just a bonus. But please, never underestimate how much I care about you. I wouldn't have it any other way. Ken. Ciara isn't hugging me back. Despite my arms being wrapped around her, Ciara's arms remain at her sides. She starts sobbing next to my ear. No. Don't do this. To me. Please don't do this. Ken. I... Ciara barely manages to speak between her sobs. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing, but all I want for her is to know that I care. If you have it, you need to call yourself selfish. Or excuse me. <clears throat> Jeez. Yeah, my voice is mixed up. If you have it in you to call yourself selfish, then you have to let me be selfish too. No matter what it takes, I'll figure out what needs to change. I'll make these feelings go away. And if there's anything that you need me to do, then you better tell me. I'll get mad if you don't. Gently, Siori finally puts her arms around me in return. I don't know anything. It's all really scary. I don't understand any of my feelings, Ken. What? The only time I'm not feeling nothing is when I'm feeling pain. But your hugs are so warm. And that's really scary, too. Because I might... Because I might combust into flames. Siori let me go. As she does, I let her go as well. The festival is tomorrow. Yeah. It's going to be fun, right? Yeah. How would you like for me to spend it all with you? Um, uh. It's what I want. I promise. I, I think it would be nice then. 
Yeah. Shiori wipes her eyes. If I could spend the whole day here, I would. Of all days, this has to be the one where I have other plans. Maybe I should cancel. No, don't. Please don't. If you did that, then I really wouldn't forgive you. But it's almost time for Yuri to meet me at my house. At the very least, you, do you want to come along and help out? It would be fun. To my surprise, Sayori shakes her head. I'm sorry. I don't know if that I would be very good help for me today. Let me try that again. I don't know if that would be very good for me today. <clears throat> you understand, right? Excuse me. Jeez. I understand. Er, ah. It's hard for me to fully understand, but I'm trying my hardest. It's okay. Don't worry too much about it. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? All right. I look forward to it. I say goodbye to Siori and exit her house. On the way home, I find myself still feeling uneasy. But it's hard for me to keep thinking about it when Yuri's about to come over too. I think Siori is right. I shouldn't be worrying too much, and we're definitely going to have a great time tomorrow. I should just focus on what's ahead of me. As I approach my house, I see something that makes me feel a little moment of panic. Yuri? Ah, thank goodness. You're a little early. I'm sorry I wasn't home yet. Were you waiting long for a long time? No, I just got here. But I started to get really nervous when nobody answered the doorbell. I had thoughts of breaking the window and entering in that way. And I wasn't trying to steal your 50-inch TV or anything. You always could have texted me. If I had known, I would have reassured you and hurried more on my way home. Ah, uh, I suppose that's true. I didn't think of that, for some reason. It should be common sense to do that, but I decided to ignore it. Anyway, let's go inside. I see you brought a lot of stuff with you. That's right. And you did manage to find everything I asked you to buy as well? Yeah, pretty much. At least, I hope I got everything right. I'm sure it will be fine. I take Yuri to my room. The first thing she does is glance around curiously, which makes me feel anxious. And I guarantee Yuri that I'm not hiding anything. It's so clean. Ha ha ha. I cleaned it before you came over, so... That's very considerate of you to do. Uh, no. I would be really embarrassed for my room to be a mess while you were here. Hmm. Well, I do enjoy cleaning. I would have gladly helped you clean. Uh, that would be even more embarrassing. Wait, don't look in there! I snatched Yuri's wrist, which was in the process of opening a desk drawer of mine. I can think of a thousand and one things, but I'm not going there. Ah, uh -uh. I'm sorry. I wasn't thinking for some reason. Jesus Christ, Yuri. Let's... Don't go picking into other people's uh, desk drawers. Jesus. Anyways. I was just spacing out. It's fine, it's fine. Hello, welcome to the stream. Uh, how's it going? DDEM? I have never heard of DDEM. Is it another one of those Doki Doki mods? I let go of Yuri's wrist. She puts both of her hands firmly in her lap, as if making sure she's keeping track of them. This is my left hand is one. This is my left wrist, and this is my right wrist. So I know which is which. Doki Doki exit music? Not, I don't believe so. Anyways, uh, how's it going? So, um, should we get started? Ah, uh, yes. Um, I have a few things planned that you can help with. Decorations and other atmospheric enhancements. Atmospheric enhancements? You know. Mood lighting, aromatherapy candles. Oh, wow. I didn't know you planned on taking it that far. Of course. I want to help take our guests to a faraway place. 
But there's cotton candy and rides and balloons too. Do they float? Oh yes, they float. Anyways, although many will stop by just out of curiosity. And for cupcakes, I guess. I'm determined to provide an experience that will leave them wanting more. As far as Doki Doki exit music goes, I'll have to look into that. Anyways, <clears throat> that's great. It's easy to forget that you're a pretty intense person. Ah, uh, you should try relaxing more. Do some Tai Chi. Raid. Intense? I guess that's the best way to put it. Is that a bad thing? No, not at all. It's something that I like about you, actually. Is that so? That makes me feel relieved. And kind of happy. Yeah, no need to be so anxious. Just drink some Sanka and you'll be fine. You can relax a little. Relax. I brought some things for relaxation. I was going to use them during the poetry event. Oh yeah? Like what? Let's see. Yuri rummages through her bag. She pulls out a few candles and a wooden cylinder shaped object. I did some shopping on the way here, so I happened to have these in my bag. I plan to cover the windows in black paper and use the candles to light the room. I hope we don't set the school on fire. I think that would be amazing, don't you? Provided that uh, you don't set the whole festival on fire? I don't see a problem. Yeah, that would be really neat. What's that wooden thing, though? Oh, this? It's a diffuser for essential oils. How familiar are you with aromatherapy? Not familiar at all. Actually, in real life, I do know a little bit about aromatherapy, but not a great deal. Ah, is that so? It's one of my favorite contributors to a positive atmosphere. Depending on the oils or herbs you choose, you can change the mood of the air itself. You can even feel it permeate through your body. Relaxation, positive energy, romance, reflection. It's almost like magic. Minus the silly hat with the bat with the bunny rabbit. Yuri takes the cylinder and pushes a switch on the bottom. In just a moment, a thin ray of vapor begins to spout through a small hole on the top. Wow, that smells wonderful. <laughs> nah, just kidding. What kind of mood is that one for? This is a jasmine essential oil. It smells a little sweet and flowery, right? Yeah, that's a good way to describe it. I chose jasmine for the event because it provides more than relaxation. Jasmine enhances your emotions and help you feel them flow through your body. You feel warmer and your heart pounds more heavily. So much so, you might have a heart attack if you breathe in too much. Yeah, real safe there, kiddo. Don't you think that would be perfect for sharing our poems? It does sound suitable, but you seem to know a lot about this, so I'll trust your opinion with anything. Yuri smiles gently, clearly enjoying herself. She again reaches into her bag and pulls out several spools of thin ribbon. What are those for? Well, did you purchase the origami paper I asked you to get? Yeah, I have it over here. We won't be using the paper for folding origami. Darn, I was looking forward to making a praying mantis. Anyways, what I'd like to do is write a different word on each paper. We'll need about a hundred of them. Oh yeah? What will these be used for? Well, I'm going to cut pieces of ribbon to hang them from the doorway of the classroom. Then we can fasten the paper onto the ribbons to create a doorway curtain. Wouldn't that be beautiful? I think that'd be a little dangerous, but that's just me. It would also catch the eye of those passing by the room. It may attract some to peek inside. That's really creative. I had no idea you'd be so good at this, Yuri. Yes, that's so. Well, I suppose I do get a little intense, as you put it. Uh-huh. Yuri giggles with red cheeks. Is it just me or is she more relaxed than when it's just the two of us? Huh. Or maybe it's the excitement she feels from sharing something that she enjoys. Or maybe she inhaled too much jasmine. Here's a marker, Ken. You can write any characters you want. I'll help you once I finish cutting the ribbons. Ah, alright. Sitting on the floor together, the two of us get to work. I carefully draw a different character on each paper, doing my best to manage my bad handwriting. 
Yuri unravels a long strand of red ribbon to her desired length. Then she reaches into her bag once more and pulls out a pocket knife. Eh? The knife is strangely beautiful. With an emphasis on strangely. The silver handle has an intricate pattern of waves etched into it. The blade itself is gently tinted blue. That's no ordinary pocket knife. It looks really fancy. Ah, uh, well... Embarrassed, Yuri looks away. What is it? You're going to think it's weird. Yuri, whatever it is, I have no reason to judge. I'm going to disagree. To each their own, you know. If you promise you won't be weirded out... Excuse me. <clears throat> if you promise you won't be weirded out... Yeah, I promise. Alright. The thing is, I'm kind of into knives. They're just so pretty. That's unsettling. I, I can't help it. I don't know what it is. A combination of craftsmanship and feeling of danger, maybe? Uh, what am I saying? Please don't think I'm weird for this. Ah, ha, ha. You're laughing at me. No, I'm laughing at you. Wait, what? Okay. Okay, I must have misinterpreted that. It's just funny how nervous you got about sharing. It's, well, an interesting thing to be into, I guess. But I think it kind of suits you. Okay, you'd never say that to a person! Good God! Ugh. I would be a little more concerned if someone ever said that to me. Ugh, Jesus Christ. For some of this dialogue here, it makes a question the character. Anyways. Suits me? Yeah, it's kind of intense. Ha ha ha. Besides, it's a really cool looking knife. Can't deny that. It is, isn't it? Yuri relaxes her expression once again. Would you like to hold it? Sure, I'll check it out. Yuri carefully hands me the knife, with the handle facing me. I take it and turn it around in my hands. It feels heavy, and extremely solid. Where do you even get a knife like this? I don't even want to know. Curious of its sharpness, I feel the point of the knife with my index finger. Ow. Ken, why did you do that? I didn't expect it to be that sharp. I barely touched it at all. It's my fault. I should have warned you. Idiot. This knife is extremely sharp. It can cut through skin like it's paper. Oh no. A small drop of blood trickles down the side of my finger. Yuri takes my hand and gives the wound a closer look. Ah. Uh, she stares at it and noticeably fidgets. If you're squeamish, I'll go wash it off now. Ah. Uh, without warning, Yuri puts my finger in her mouth and licks the wound. Eh. I got a funny feeling that I should probably call the cops at this point. I feel her tongue curl around my finger. Startled, I instinctively pull my hand back. Uh oh Please forgive me. I wasn't thinking. I... Yuri lowers her head, her face burning up. Yuri, that's the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. How could I do something like that? Good question, stupid. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, sure it was a little weird, and it took me by surprise. But I guess she was just trying to help, right? Yuri, I think you're overreacting a little. Uh, She doesn't lift her head. What if she doesn't recover from this for the rest of the afternoon? Oh, I think she will. Alright, you know what? This might be a stupid thing to do, but I do it anyway. I take Yuri's hand and... <sighs> Good God. I thought the last statement was weird. I think this takes the cake. I take Yuri's hand and lick her index finger in return. And at this point, she calls the cops on me and has me arrested. Ken, did, did you really just do that? And now we're even. Yuri just looks at me like I did something wrong. Ah, ha, ha. I knew that would be a bad idea. So why'd you do it? If not for the sweet aroma of the jasmine oil, the air would be extremely heavy right now. You're so weird, Ken. Boy, that's the pot calling the kettle black. Yuri giggles shyly. Eh? Yuri calling me weird? I have no response to that. 
Actually, I would have a response to that. But I'll keep it to myself. Where do you keep your bandages? Uh, I don't think I need one, actually. It was a tiny cut. Look, it already stopped bleeding. I see. That's relieving. The tension is quickly lifted. But the awkwardness is still there. We each resume our respective activities. I watch Yuri's knife cutting through the ribbon like it's nothing but air. Meanwhile, I continue to make progress on the paper. After we finish attaching the paper to the ribbons, we lay them all out side by side. It looks better than I expected and will be very effective as a door curtain. It looks great. Good thinking coming up with this, Yuri. Ah, thanks. It's just something I saw online, really. Are you ready to move on to the next task? Yeah, let's do it. What do you have in mind? I like to create a banner. That's why I asked you to buy the paint tablets. Ah, that's right. One of the items Yuri has asked me to buy was a kit of watercolor paint tablets. We'll need about six cups of water and put each of the tablets in. Do you mind fetching those for us? Of course not. Six cups of water. I'll be right back in a minute. Thank you very much. Oh, and just a little bit of water is okay. I'm parched. If you fill the cups too much, it will be too diluted. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use a small pl Let me try that again. Taking Yuri's advice, I decided to use small plastic bathroom cups rather than full-size glasses. Smart thinking. I put them on a plate to catch any paint that drips, then bring it back into my room. Yuri? Yes? I come in to see Yuri quickly unrolling her sleeve, pulling it back over her arm. Ah, uh, nothing. Your face is a little red. Is it too hot in here or anything? Uh, no, not at all. There's nothing wrong, so... Let's mix the paint. Yuri hurriedly dismisses me and takes it upon herself to unwrap the tablets, dropping them into the cups. So... I thought we would do something simple that would look very nice. I'd like to paint a gradient across the banner. Starting with the colors for a sunrise, then daytime, then sunset, and then nighttime. Once it dries, I'll write an inspirational quote across the banner. We can hang it on the wall behind the podium at the front of the classroom. Excuse me. Ah, neat. What are you going to write? Well, it'll be more fun to surprise you. Yuri smiles at me. If you say so. After rolling out the banner, Yuri and I kneel on opposite sides so we don't get in the way of each other. Yuri uses a brush and adds a few dots of different colors across the banner to serve as a color guide when we paint. <clears throat> this kind of reminds me of elementary school. Painting on a banner with watercolors feels a lot like art class projects we had back then. It's relaxing. Uh, I'm sorry if this feels too childish. No, I didn't mean that at all. It's kind of fun, you know? Yeah, it is fun. I'm glad you feel that way, too. Yuri stops painting for a moment, thinking to herself. For me, I don't need to go out and do crazy things to have fun. True. In fact, I usually don't even want to. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If people are going to judge you based on that, they're not even worth your time. I just like when I can spend time with one other person. Even if it's something simple, like reading, it doesn't even matter if we don't talk much. Just having a friend next to me makes things feel a little bit nicer. I think that's all it takes for me to be happy. Is that so? Even if you and I are quite different, I can understand where she's coming from. I feel that way about things like anime and games. Partially true. About myself. We're simply sharing the experience with someone who can make me happy. I think I feel the same way. Yuri smiles gently. I knew you'd understand. Yuri leans over the banner to grab an unused paintbrush, but it move at the same time, causing my head to bump into hers. I almost gave her a concussion. Yeah. Sorry. Yuri reels back and I quickly lift my hands in surprise. Are you hurt? No, I'm not hurt. It just startled me, that's all. Sorry, I should have asked you to get it for me. It's not your fault. Ah, your face. There are droplets of paint on Yuri's face and neck. Is there something on my face? Yeah, I accidentally got paint on you. Sorry, it's totally my fault. I'll get a towel right away. I rush out and fetch a small towel, and then I dampen it with hot water. I return to my room and kneel back down in front of her. Here. 
I pat down Yuri's face and neck with a towel. Uh, is something wrong? It's hot. I just didn't expect it. Sorry. I didn't want to use cold water. Having finished, I start to retract my hand, but Yuri suddenly holds my wrist. Wait. Eight? Just for a little longer. It feels really nice. Uh, I keep my hand still against Yuri's neck. She looks into my eyes. It's an intense expression that I recognize from when she reads her books. As if almost she's lost in a gaze, enveloped by her own thoughts. Making the situation even more awkward than it really needs to be. She breathes gently, half through slightly parted lips. What is happening? Is it the aroma of the jasmine oil giving me this dizzy feeling? Which I mentioned a few moments ago? I do have windows in my room, I can always crack one open! Yuri's gentle fingers wrapped around my wrist send a tingling sensation through my arm. And suddenly her face seems to be much closer to mine than it was just a moment ago. Ah. Yuri slowly pulls away. Sorry, I've been feeling a little lightheaded today. Maybe I shouldn't have brought in the jasmine oil. Maybe I should have asked you to open a window so we can get some fresh air. I didn't mean to space out. It's fine. The moment is over as soon as it began. Yuri picks up her brush again, but her movements seem clumsier, like she's unable to focus. Smooth. Real smooth, dude. I remained silent, forced to ignore the event that just transpired. I hesitantly retrieve my own brush and continue following Yuri's example. That should do it. I still I finished filling the night sky with white dots that look like stars. Looking at the banner as a whole, it's pretty and unnatural looking. Blech. I think it came out better than expected. I'm really happy with the results. Yeah, me too. Are you going to add the lettering now? Ah, uh, not yet. It needs to dry first. Dummy. That's true. Won't that take a while? Well, perhaps it would be best to leave it here and have you bring it in in the morning. Just don't step on it and get paint all over your carpet. I can do the lettering in the classroom before our event starts. Is that okay? That's totally fine. Wonderful. In that case, I don't think there's anything more for us to do here. Phew. Ah, ha, ha, ha. You say that like you're glad it's over. Was I wrong to assume that you were at least enjoying yourself a little bit? Ah, uh, no, it's not that. I'm just glad we managed to get everything done. I see. I am too. I was a little concerned about time. I need to start making dinner soon. Ah, uh, so you don't have any time left? I was secretly hoping we would have an extra time after finish the work. Well... Yuri thinks to herself, I, I think it would be too irresponsible for me to wait much longer. I'm sorry. I was hoping there would be more time as well. It's probably my fault. I smell flirting. Sorry for being such a slow worker. No, it's not your fault at all. Actually, it totally is your fault. You spent three hours doing one thing, jerk. And the important thing is that we got everything done, right? Yeah. So, I shouldn't be disappointed or anything. Gathering all her things, Yuri seemed to look a little downcast. I understand why. It sounded like she rarely gets the opportunity to spend time with friends in a relaxed environment. But that doesn't mean that this is the last time it can happen. Once Yuri packs up, I walk her out the front door. Thank you very much for having me today. No problem, I'm glad I was able to help. Just let me know if there's anything else you need me to bring tomorrow. I will. Well then. Yuri fidgets. I guess I'll see you tomorrow. Wait. I kind of say that without thinking. About today. It's fine that we didn't have as much time as we wanted. Because we can do this again. Whenever you want, you can come over or we can go out somewhere. Ah, uh, I forgot you don't like going out much. As I stumble over my own words, Yuri simply smiles bashfully. Anyway, you know what I'm trying to say, so... You're very thoughtful, Ken. Yuri takes a step closer to me and briefly squeezes my hand, hoping she doesn't crush it. And I end up in a cast. I kind of like that about you. Well, how am I supposed to respond to that? Simple, you like her back. But I don't even get the chance to, as Yuri suddenly pulls back. Sayori? 
Or, Sayori? Eh? Ah, but I can. Sayori? Just now we weren't. Hee <laughs> hee It's okay, Ken. I just stopped by to say hi. I totally wasn't spying on you two, flirting with each other. Like a creep. Oh, brother. Um, well, it's nice to see you. I'm sorry, but I'm already on my way to leave. Aw, oh, really? That's too bad. I'm sorry. But we'll, but we'll all be together at the festival tomorrow, so... So that's fine, right? Of course! Siari beams. Yeah, so... I'll see you tomorrow? Clearly embarrassed, Yuri hurries off. Siari waves goodbye after her. Siari? I thought you didn't want to come over today. <laughs> well, I tried staying in my room, but my imagination was being really mean to me. So I had to come here and see it for myself. You were flirting, weren't you? Jerk! See what? What are you talking about? You know, how much fun you were having with Yuri, and how close you got to her? Awkward! It makes me really happy that you've made such good friends. That's all that matters to me. Tears start fall down. Blech. Thank you. Tears start to fall down Siori's face. That's all that matters to me. Why am I feeling this way, Ken? I'm supposed to be happy for you. Why does it feel like my heart is splitting in half? It hurts so much. Everything hurts so much. This would be so much better if I could just disappear. Siori, don't say that. It's true, Ken. If I wasn't here, then you wouldn't have to waste your sympathy on me. You wouldn't have to put up with me being selfish. Monica was right. I should just... Monica? Monica was right about what? <clears throat> Sayori, what I said before is true. I'm not going to let this continue. Caring about you like this isn't the burn your mind is making it out to be. It's something that makes me happy. It's something that I wouldn't trade for anything else. So even if it takes an entire lifetime, or two, I'm going to be by your side until you don't feel any more pain. But... Sayori looks away. I put a hand on her shoulder to reassure her. I'm scared, Ken. I'm really scared. What are you scared of, Sayori? I'm scared that, that I might like you more than you like me. Sayori. It's true, isn't it? I was weak and started to like you too much. I did this to myself. Ken, I like you so much that I want to die. That's how I feel. And we're getting Romeo and Juliet on this uh, scene. And, and. That's enough, Sayori. I don't want you to hurt anymore. I slide my hand down Sayori's arm and squeeze her hand in my own. Do you remember how I said I always know what's best for you? Do you still believe me? Wordlessly, Sayori nods, even if you don't understand all of your own feelings. I know what you need the most right now, and that's what I'm going to give you. Sayori. Hmm. Ah, decision time. Should I confess my love for her, or should I just continue uh, being friends with her? Well, you know what? Just for grins and giggles, I'm just going to go with option number one. I love you. Eh? Those are my true feelings. So there's no way you could like me more than I like you. I should have realized it sooner. But spending time with everyone at the club, making new friends, and having fun with you every day... It helped me realize that you are truly the most important person to me. That's why I'll accept any of your burdens, as long as we continue like this every day, with you by my side. Then I know we'll both be happy. Ken. Suddenly, Sierra wraps her arms tightly around me. Ken, is this really okay? Yeah. I hold Sierra in my arms and pull her closer. You'll never have to let go of me again. I love you, Ken. I want to be with you forever. Me too. I feel Sayori's grip around me weakening a little bit. What is this? Sayori? I'm supposed to be happy right now. I always thought this would be the happiest moment for me. But why? Even now? Why won't the rain clouds go away? They're not going away at all, Ken. It's okay, Sayori. It might take some time for things to get better again. 
it takes, I'll be there every step of the way. That's all that matters right now. Oh, okay. I trust you. Sierra and I slowly release each other. So, I guess that makes the festival tomorrow our first date, huh? Hehehe. <laughs> what are you saying? I don't want to think about those things, you know. I want everything to be the same as it always has been. Even if we really are a couple. You have a couple of what? I don't know if I could handle anything anymore right now. It's really new and scary to me. I understand. We'll go at whatever pace suits you best. Hey, Ken. Sierra gazing at me once again, smiling sadly. Even if I get really, really sad, this is the best thing for me, right? Hey. I don't really understand what Sayori means by that. Are you saying that this is making you feel sad, Sayori? I... I don't know. I don't understand what I'm feeling. It feels like a bunch of thorns when you told me you love me. But that's why I want to trust you. You know what's best for me. Yeah. I do. <clears throat> Excuse me. That's my promise. I say that, but in reality, I've never felt more uncertain when it comes to Sayori. I know that I love her, and she loves me, but I'm having as much trouble understanding Sayori's feelings as she is. Even though I can comfort her, I keep wondering if I should be doing something more, or something different. I know these thoughts will continue to plague me until things are back to the way they were. Is that what Sayori meant by not wanting anything to change? I don't know, but I know that I'll give everything I've got. Sayori is the most important person to me and I'll do whatever it takes to have a happy future with her. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori, but Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up, but decided that's a little too much. Like I've done before a thousand times. Meanwhile, the preparations for the event should be nearly complete. Banner, you and I painted as dry, and I gently rolled it up to take with me. She sent me a pleasant text reminding me not to forget anything, and I reassured her. Funnily enough, I probably feel the same way as Natsuki about the event. I'm more excited for it to be over so I can spend time with Sayori and Yuri at the festival. But knowing Monica, I'm sure the event will be great too. Ken, you're the first one here. Thanks for being early. That's funny. I thought at least Yuri would be here by now. Monica is placing little booklets on each set, on each of the desks in the classroom. They must be the ones she prepared that all have the poems we're performing. In the end, I found a random poem online that I thought Monica would like, and submitted it. So that's the one I'll be performing. I'm surprised you didn't bring Sayori with you. Yeah, she overslept again. That dummy. You'd think that on days this important, she'd try a little harder. I say that, but I suddenly remember what Sayori told me yesterday, and I suddenly feel awful, knowing it's not nearly that simple for her. I only said it because it's the way I'm used to thinking. But... Maybe I should have gone to wake her up after all? Ha ha ha. You should take a little responsibility for her, Ken. I mean, especially after you exchanged with her yesterday. You kind of left her hanging this morning, you know. Exchange? Monica, you know about that? Okay, this is starting to get a little bit creepier. Of course I do. I have planted cameras at both your houses so I can keep track of your activities to send back to my mothership. I'm the club president after all, but I stammer, embarrassed. Did Sierra really tell her about it that quickly? That we're a couple now? I didn't really plan on bringing it up with anyone yet. Jeez. You don't know the full story at all, so don't worry. I probably know a lot more than you think. Eh? Hey? Monica is being as friendly as usual, but for some reason I felt a chill down my spine after hearing that. Hey, do you want to check out the pamphlets? They came out really nice. Yeah, sure. I grabbed one of the pamphlets laid out on the desk. Oh yeah, they really did. Something like this will definitely help people take the club more seriously. <clears throat> yeah, I thought so too. I flipped through the pages. Each member's poem is neatly printed on its own page, giving it an almost professional feel. I recognize Natsuki's and Yuri's poems from the ones they performed during our practice. What's this? I flipped to Siari's poem. It's different from the one she practiced. It's one that I haven't read before. 
Oh my god. Get out of me, get out of me, get out of me, get A million times over. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. So we'll go start it right here. Get out of my head before I do what I know is best for you. Get out of my head before I listen to everything she said to me. Get out of my head before I show you how much I love you. Get out of my head before I finish writing this poem. But a poem is never actually finished. It just stops moving. Yeah, get out of my head repeats a bunch of times. Get out of my head. Whoa. Uh, uh, what is this? Reading the poem, I get a pit in my stomach. Ken, what's wrong? Uh, nothing. This poem feels completely different from everything else Siori's written. But more than that, I, I changed my mind. I'm going to get Siori, so... Ah, uh, well, all right. Try not to take too long, okay? I quickly leave the classroom. Don't strain yourself. Monica calls that out after me. I quicken my pace. What was I thinking? I should have tried a little bit harder for Siori. It's not a big deal, so at least to at least wake her or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That's all she needs, and that's what I want to give her. I reach Siori's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since she's not picking up her phone, either. Like yesterday, I opened the door and let myself in. This time, remembering to disable the alarms. Siori? She really is a heavy sleeper. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. That really is something that a boyfriend would do, isn't it? No. No. You don't do that sort of thing. That's creepy. In any case, it just feels right. No, it doesn't. Outside Siori's room, I knock on her door. Siori? Wake up, dummy. There's no response. I really didn't want to have it in. Oh, boy. I really didn't want to have to enter a room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? Yeah, it is, actually. But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Si she <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh god! Oh man! Oh boy! <laughs> I was not expecting this! Oh my god! What the HE double hockey stick? What the HE double hockey stick? Is this a nightmare? It has to be! This isn't real! There's no way this can be real! Siri wouldn't do this! Everything was normal up until a few days ago! Okay, in reality, nothing was normal. Anyways, that's why I can't believe what my eyes are showing me. I suppressed the urge to vomit. Just yesterday, I told Siri that it would be a fur. I told her I knew what's best, and that everything would be okay. Then why? Why would she do this? How can I be so helpless? What did I do wrong? Confessing to her. I shouldn't have confessed to her. That's not what Siori needed at all! She even told me how painful it is for others to care about her! Then why did I confess to her? And make her feel even worse! Why was I so selfish? This is my fault! My swarming thoughts kept... My swarming thoughts kept telling me everything I could have done to prevent this. If I just spent more time with her, walked her to school, and remained friends with her like it always has been, then I could have prevented this. I know I could have prevented this. Screw the literature club. Screw the festival. I just lost my best friend. Someone I grew up with. She's gone forever now. Nothing I could do can bring her back. This isn't some game where I can reset and try something different. I had only one chance, and I wasn't careful enough. And now I'll carry this guilt with me until I die. Nothing in my life is worth more than hers. 
but I still couldn't do what she needed from me. And now, I can never take it back. Never, 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 never. Oh boy. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Oh. Oh Jesus. I see an annoying girl running toward me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is my neighbor and good friends since we were children. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! Things just went from sad to just downright effed up. You know, the kind of friend you'd never see yourself making today, but it just kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this. But starting around high school, she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's going to chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosshair and let a little bit of it catch up to me. What in God's name? Oh, what's going on? It's an ordinary school day like any other. Mornings are usually the worst. Being surrounded by couples and friend groups walking to school together. Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content by just getting by on the beverage while spending my free time on games and anime. Like I previously stated in my previous streams, half that's true. There's always the anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. I would disagree. The school day is as ordinary as ever, and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. And hopefully see Siori's image appear before me. Am I hallucinating? Who knows? Clubs. There really aren't any that interest me. Except the turkey club. On whole wheat. Maybe with some, maybe some lettuce and... Maybe some barbecue sauce per se? Anyways. Besides, most of them would probably be way too demanding for me to want to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Again? Oh my... Monica! Just phased in out of nowhere. Oh my goodness, I totally expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh... Yeah, it has. Monica smiles sweetly, not knowing that she has a sinister plot up her sleeve. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talk, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, athletic, rich. Basically completely out of my league. So having her smile at me so genuinely feels a little... What did you come in here for anyway? Oh, I've just been looking for supplies to use for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper in here? Or markers? Or mega death rays? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Ha ha ha, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. So, I evaporated every single member. They are now nothing but dust. Thank you for your time. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A lit- Christ. Didn't expect that. A literature club. Literature? That sounds kind of... dull? How many members do you have so far? Um, ah ha ha. It's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I can see that. Burn. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. 
I still like to debate that, whether it's pronounced manga or manga. I know most people would say manga, but I always say manga because it sounds more like mango. But that's neither here nor there. Anyways. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member's a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. Hey, Ken. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so. But in that case, is there any chance you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at the very least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Oh, I bet it would. Please. Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Except there's a golf club next door, and I was going to join that. Or even the turkey club down the hall. Mmm, turkey club sandwich sounds good. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I could check it out. Ah, awesome. You're really sweet, Ken. You know that. And you're starting to creep me out a little bit. It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the materials another time. You're more important. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresistible smile. And the next thing you know, she's going to contact her mothership, abduct me, and use me for evil experiments. I timidly follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit, being generally used for third-year classes and activities. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door, almost breaking it. I'm back. Christ's name is going on. And I brought a prisoner, or er, guest, with me. What? Christ. A? A guest? Seriously? You brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere! Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Ken. All words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. So let me guess! You're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki? The girl with the sour attitude, whose name is apparently Natsuki, is one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes me think she's probably a first year. Uh, anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So, I ran into Ken in the classroom and decided to come check out the club. After I pointed my mega death ray, or I mean, convinced him to join me. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica! Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought anyone new? I was going to... Well, you know. Sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that, but I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come sit down, Ken? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here, but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to take the club fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. I wonder why. <clears throat> Sorry, I got my voices mixed up again. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention. Like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. Very true. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before graduate. Ugh. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. Natsuki reluctantly agrees. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must have worked really hard just to find these two. Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. 
After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Ah, uh, I guess. Hehehe. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. Eh? Th that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. <laughs> well, I'm just trying to match up the characters. As best I can. And plus, I figure, since Natsuki's such a sour attitude, I think I figure giving her a wretched voice helps her character out a lot more. And you're right on one thing, though. It does, uh... <clears throat> it does, uh, give a, uh... Ugh. That's giving my throat a little bit of a uh, throat ache. Anyways... I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I, at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Ken, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga? You know, is it, or is it always, or is it manga? I find that word very debatable, because some people say manga, some people say manga. Kind of like the old tomato tomato sort of deal. Anyways, I muttered quietly to myself, half joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. And you're right, she does need a new voice for this part. So I'll give her a new one. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her fingers. My favorites are usually novels that build up deep and complex fantasy worlds. I'm being a sense of deja vu. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading, yada yada blah blah blah. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. I think we already established that. Well, you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination and to completely throw you for a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Uh, I read a horror book once. It was called Happy Fluffy Bunnies. So cute, it's scary. I desperately grasped something I could relate to at the minimal level. At this rate, Yuri might as well be having a conversation with a rock. Ahaha, ha. I didn't expect that from you, Yuri. It suits you personality. Oh, is that so? Really? If a story makes me think, or takes me to another world, then I really can't put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ah! Oh yeah, <clears throat> See, I gotta give her a new voice here. Oh, I hate horror. Oh, why is that? Well, I just... Natsuki's eyes dart over to me for a split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually like to write things about cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What keeps with that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looked like you were writing or working on a poem called... Don't say it out loud! And get that back! Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Oh, well, I guess sometimes. I do care. I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No! Natsuki averts her eyes. I wouldn't like them. Uh, not a very confident writer yet? I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you can set an example and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. Awkward silence. I guess it's the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? 
Hmm? Natsuki and Yuri look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll all share them with each other. That way, everyone is even. Uh -oh. Ah, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. I did decide to take on the responsibility of Vice President, after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step for us to take. Hmm, excuse me. Ugh. Dang. Anyways, do you agree as well, Ken? Hold on, there's still one problem. Hey, what's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind the entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made any decision. I still have other clubs to look at, and... Um... I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare at, back at me with dejected eyes. But, but... I'm sorry, I thought... Hmm. Eh? The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I, I guess I need to tell you the truth, Ken. The thing is... We don't have enough members to get to form an official club. We need four, and I've been trying really, really hard to find new members, even if it's against their will. And if we don't find one b before the festival, I I'm def I'm defenseless against these girls. Okay, it's funny they said that all three of them have dejected looks, but it looks like only two of them actually show up. And Suki's more like, she doesn't care about my decision. Well, anyways. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides... Hey, welcome back to the stream, how's it going? And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... I'm doing alright, my throat's a little, uh, achy right now, but I'm doing alright. Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Ken? Yeah. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me for a moment. Eh, yeah, not really. Oh no, the Pavilion just left after all this. I would be super pissed. So I actually didn't make mention of the cupcakes. Huh. Ken, I'm so happy. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Uh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. Monica looks over at me once more. Ken, I look forward to seeing you. How you express yourself. Hee hee hee. Yeah. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? Oh, I don't know. Could you? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be on my way then. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Will I really be happy spending every day after school within a literature club? We're getting deja vu here, folks. Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances, and I'm sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. Alright, round three. Alright, sure. See what this says. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts. Oh my god. Sayori. Oh Jesus. What have I done? 
Oh God. Oh my god. Let's just get this done and over with. Whoops. We're still going after, uh, we're still going after Yuri. There we go. Natsuki, you can take a long walk off a short pier. When I saw Sayari, I was like, what have I done? There we go. All right, 19 out of 20, that's not bad. Hi again, Ken. You're asking me if, uh, who did this? Don't spoil it. I have to figure this out for myself. Nobody spoils nothing for me. Don't. Mm. Glad you didn't see. Glad to see you didn't run away from Anas. Ha, ha, ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. While I'm back at the literature club, joy. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Whoa, what in Christ's name is going on? Thanks for keeping your promise, Ken. I hope this isn't too overwhelming for a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature. What's going on? Am I? S is the room tilting? Or is it just my overactive imagination? Oh my god. Oh Jesus. Ugh. No, I am not seeing this. The room really is tilting. And then the background. That's Sayori. Oh my dear god. Anyways. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Oh god, what is going on? If you're not seeing the room tilt... Are you even watching this? Oh come on, Lucky deserves it in slack! Never the hell it was by Monica! I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what! But if you don't take us seriously, then there is an end of it! Oh. What? I can't read that. Natsuki. Your hair's in the way. You mainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps manga collection in the club room. Oh, the room really is tilting. Oh my god. Monica! Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Well, like I said before, I gotta try to find a voice that suits her. Because she's very temperamental. Sure. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Ken. We'll make sure to put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read? Well, I really can't say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. 
So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. Wait. I didn't mean it like that. Uh, if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Uh, no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be a part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. Well, like I said, as long as it doesn't spoil, you can say whatever is on your mind. Yeah, because I like to keep, I like to figure things out for myself. I didn't want you to feel left out. So I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Really? She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Okay, so it looks like everything's back to normal now. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. I can't help but notice her intense expression. Like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in a closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more. But at the same time, I would feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Uh... Crud. I think she noticed me looking at her. She sneaks another glance at me, and our eyes meet for a split second. But that only makes her hide her face deeper in her book. Sorry. I was just spacing out. I muttered this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. But I'm just rereading a bit of this, so... That's the book that you gave me, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted to reread some of it. Not for any particular reason. Just curious, how come you have two copies of the same book? Uh, well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, uh, that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. I see. There's something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decided to let it go. I'll definitely start reading it soon. In about 20 years. I already mentioned this. I'm glad to hear. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Is that so? What's the story about, anyway? Well... Hmm... I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. Yeah, we're definitely going uh, deja vu here. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped here have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse, and they start selectively breeding to people by cutting off their limbs and asphyxiating them too. Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. Are you sure? That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? You made it sound like it was going to be a nice story. So that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah, uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Ken? No, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange and new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be so evil. Oh my god. Here we go. Okay. 
but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. That suddenly... I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well, I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts... My whole body gets incredibly... Aw, oh, it's skipped! I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. It just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club, after all. It's not a video game club! Uh... That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started reading it, right? Yes. God's name just happened. I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, -huh, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. Alright. It's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Maybe a little distracting. But the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri's in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry. I was just bathing in the field. Whoa, slow down. Yeah, there is a way you can actually uh, see this. Let me see. Let me go back to the history. Okay, let me see. Okay, I guess I can't see it here. Let's return. Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I I do? I don't really mean to. Let me see. Okay, it looks like it doesn't, uh... Okay, it looks like it doesn't, uh... Print off the action... What has happened recently, but it looks like it just goes back a couple, of uh, Spaces. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Ha ha ha. Here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against yours, and hold my book more between the two of them. Uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess it makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and folds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Uh, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. <clears throat> but I'm... But in holding it like this? We're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face, and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? to turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again, and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Can't do that right now. Can't do that right now, dude. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, that's okay. You're not used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. 
My thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah. Uh, that's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So I don't know why that came into my head. Ah ha ha. Yuri, are you feeling all right? Eh? Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. Maybe she had something bad for lunch. Maybe she had cold pizza. I don't know. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hand again on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out to the classroom. What on earth was that about? Ken, did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yuri's acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. Because if you did, I will strangle you with my hands. No, nothing. Ah ha ha, don't worry. I believe you, silly. Yuri just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Excuse me. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems to each other? Eh? Shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Alright, time to do Natsuki's first. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I share mine with hers first. took this club seriously, then go home! What? Harsh? What? You expect me to believe that you have to put effort into this? Do you think I'm stupid? I'm not a writer. Maybe it's not very good, but yeah, I did put in effort. We all start somewhere, right? If you're still proud of the first poem you ever wrote, then I'd like to read it. Ugh! Painful to think about? You'll get better out of the world. I'll tell you what to improve, but you're better off just trying it done. Fair enough. And I'm trying to do meat wad is what I'm trying to do. Well, to each their own, I guess. You know, meat wad from my uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Anyway, I guess I gotta share mine now. Knowing no, you'll probably look at stupid. And this is just the same poem as before, so I'm not gonna reread it. Well, yeah, I'm gonna try reading it again. Eagles can fly, monkeys can clown, crickets can whoop, horses can roast, owls can seek, cheetahs can run, eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. And I hate Master Shake. Yeah, I told you that you weren't gonna like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that Ronald has to be all sophisticated and stuff. Master Shake told them. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make you message any less valid. <clears throat> yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you doing great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more right right on wordplay. Like I set up for a rhyme at the end, and then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling in the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. 
That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something, moron. Didn't expect that from the long of us too, did you? Yeah, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is feeling proud, then I won't take that away from her. Alright, let's see what she has to say. Hi, Ken. Having a good time so far. Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything... If you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. But those kind of eyes, I'm too afraid if I speak up. She might blast me into another dimension. Or worse. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Ha 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 ha. Don't worry, Ken. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know. But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. Great job, Ken. I was going ooh in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Ha ha ha. That's not very fair. I will have to blast you into another dimension. You, you dirty scumbag. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean like that it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. That's weird. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she's used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly the door opens. Yuri! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing poems with each other. Eh? Already? I I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time. So I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go get my poem now. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know. I see. Well, let's read it then. Oh, it's the exact... Wait a minute. Is this the same one as before, or is this one like that? No, this is different. Alright. Hole in wall. But he ha wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically glance at my surroundings. But my burned eyes can no longer see color. Are there others in this room? Are they talking? Let me, let me finish reading this first and I'll answer your question. Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room begins to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dispiates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's right here. He's right here. Swallowing my fears, I brandish my pen. Let's see here. Now to answer your question about can I imagine about a hole in the wall? Um, hmm. I don't know. Let me read it again without the voice. Let me just read it myself. Hmm. 
Hmm. For some reason, I just can't. Speaking of weight. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Oof. I hate sneezing while I stream. It just takes everything away. Anyways. So, what do you think? Hmm. It's very freeform, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Aha, uh -huh. it's okay. Yeah, that kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud... Sound effect is on my ears. It's a little uh, bizarre, but I don't know if weird is the right, right word. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Excuse me. Yeah, something like that. Kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of coming on strongly. Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Lesson 127. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same point spot for too long, you'll just get a big, dark puddle of ink. Yeah, I think you've already established this. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Shutting down. Alright, let's see what Yuri has to say. As Yuri reads the poem, I notice her eyes lighten. Exceptional. Hey, what was that? <clears throat> Did I say some that out loud? Yuri first covers her mouth, then ends up covering her whole face. I... Uh, he's going to hate me. Um, you really didn't do anything wrong, Yuri. Eh? That's... I guess you're right. What am I getting so nervous for? <laughs> Yuri takes a breath. So, what kind of writing experience do you have? Your use of imagery and metaphors indicate you've written a lot of poetry before. Really? Wow, that's a huge compliment coming from you. This is actually my first time, really. Huh? Yuri stares at me blankly, then looks at my poem again. Well, I know that. I just meant... Um... Yuri trails off, unable to find an excuse. She traces her finger along the words in the poem, as if breaking it down more thoroughly. Yeah, okay. This is the reason I was able to tell. It's just that there are specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers, and having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to take their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick up a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. For just a short bit. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There are many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. True! It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself, to me, or Natsuki. Or all three of us. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dreamily, as if that's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. 
After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Oh, goes under the... Goes under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow. Bathing, it must be this one. The last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe, calm, breathing air of present but living in the past. The light flickers, I flicker back. I'll cross that bridge when I get there. I, I'm sorry to have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Uh, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short? I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest, since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you in a ghost theory? Uh, actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Ken. Really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left without nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. Eh? It's nothing, really. Yours was impressive, too, so... Nah. If anything, I could probably learn a thing or two from you. You think so? Yeah, of course. Uh... You know, I was really nervous about doing all this. But in the end, I enjoyed it. I'm going to keep doing my best for you, Ken. Uh, me too. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I ended up getting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Atsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, how much each of them expresses change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this long bridge? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Oh? You mean you have to try hard, that hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but it really didn't come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple suggestions. Hmm. If I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Master Shift excluded. Monica liked it. And Ken did too. And so did Frylock. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me. I appreciate the offer, but I spent a long time establishing my writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon. Unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Mm. And Ken liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. Natsuki suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize we were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Lol. Hey, eh? That's not what I... Uh, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. 
Maybe you're just jealous that Ken appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Huh. And how's Lunar who doesn't appreciate my advice more? Are you like full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, well, you know what? I was the one who was magical to grow a size builder as soon as Ken started showing up. Ah, here we go again. N Natsuki. Um, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't look wrong, though. Taking out your own insecurities on it. Others like that? Uh-oh. What's going on? What's going on? You really act as long as you look not so cute. <coughs> <coughs> okay, the music is picking up a little bit here and everything's going weird. You really act as young as you look not so cute. No, who's talking to one of the other? Beep! Angie? Sorry, but my lifestyle is too much for someone of your mental age to comprehend. See? The thing that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after they graduate no school, you know. You want to prove anything and stop harassing others with your sickening attitude. You think you can counterbalance your toxic personality just by dressing and acting cute? The only cute thing about you is how hard you try. Whoa, be careful, you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already do, don't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the eep is wrong in your your head? Yeah, go on. I can't hear everything you really think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh-uh. Suddenly, Yuri turned towards me, as if she just noticed I was standing here. Good. She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. Okay, I guess I'm supposed to decide something here. Uh, this is just making things even more awkward than it really is. I'm just gonna pick Yuri! Oh, come on! Come on, I wanna pick Yuri! Oh, what's going on? Come on! Give me my homegirl! Yuri! 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 Oh, okay, what? Oh, Jesus Christ! Oh my god! <laughs> well, that just came out of nowhere. Uh, how's it going, dude? You staying away from the alcohol? Um, hey, Ken. Why don't we step outside for a little bit? Okay? I promise not to take you prisoner. Sorry about that. <clears throat> they really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Hopefully they haven't killed each other by then. Ah ha ha. Some president I am, right? I can't even confront my own club members properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. But I never have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? <clears throat> anyway, if this makes you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. Yuri is rocking back and forth in her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri. I didn't mean it. I, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. Ken, please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about it by tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home now if you want. <clears throat> Yuri looks at me like she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. 
I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. It kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. It just... I just didn't get much of a chance to discuss my book with Ken. It would be embarrassing with you listening. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing trouble, but I really appreciate... What in God's name? Oh, now what? Oh, Christ. All right. My save, is, my save game is gone? All right, you know what? I think this is a good place to stop for right now. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, thanks everybody for watching, and thanks everybody to who has put up with uh, my horrid voice acting. Um, thank you everybody for listening in and chatting. And I'm not doing that right now. You can, it can wait. Besides, now's not the time. Um, I'll see everybody next time.